appears oppositely, the bevel is then again away from the plant. And it's really important to notice when to use the shears topwise and when to use them bottomwise. And right now, I'm actually going to use them topwise. I want to shear perpendicular to my stakes. And I want to start at the top of the plant, at the tip like this, and work away from me and down. And I'm just gently taking off foliage as I go. And again, I'm just using my little stakes here as a guide, which is very helpful. Again, you can't put plant more leaves on. You can only take them off. So I'm going to start very, very gently moving around the plant to create my spiral. And at one point, I'll have to remove the stakes that I'm using as a guide here so that I can get it uh, just the way I want it. And I find it's much easier if you move around the plant in the same direction. Um, I am right-handed, and for some reason, it's much easier for me to move around the plant, uh, what is that, counterclockwise. And I constantly move counterclockwise. I don't stop and move in the other direction. And what that does for me is it allows me to create an even plane. And once I've created a plane here, I'm just going to follow that all the way around the plant. If I start here, create a plane, stop, and begin to work on another area, they may not meet in the middle. So it's really important to start in one area, work around the plant, and meet back up where you started. So I'm going to make one twist around, we'll take a little break, and I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when we're finished. But just watch me really quickly as we move around the plant. So again, I'm holding the shears so that they are actually facing away from the plant, and I'm moving constantly in a counterclockwise direction. I'm starting at the tip, and I'm moving outward away from the plant, like this. And again, you have to change your, you have to change the orientation of your body um, from the orientation of the plant, but that's okay. The most important thing is to keep the shears level and on an even plane, uh, working away again from the plant. And I'll just finish up here, and I'll show you what we have. One more time. All right. So I've moved all the way around the plant. I'm going to take these off now. And again, this plant was roughly conical to begin with. We're just evening it up so that we can go ahead and create our spiral. Now we have a plant that is wider at the base. It's more narrow on the top. And this is going to be the perfect beginning for our spiral. And I'll show you how to do that next. Hey guys, I'm back. I just finished up the spiral here. And you can see again, I've made a nice uh, pointy cone like that that is narrow at the top and wide at the bottom. It's pretty even, it's not perfect, it doesn't need to be perfect. You know, topiary is, has an art form has been around for 2,000 years, and during those 2,000 years, I think there's been a lot of different levels of production value, and uh, so as long as it's close, it's gonna, it's gonna be gorgeous, I promise. Okay, so, now we need to form the spiral, and again, if you're really great by eye, you can actually do that without a guide, but I always use a guide, and I'll show you how to do that right now. I take a piece of ribbon, this is flagging ribbon that we use at the nursery. It's just handy because it really contrasts well with the foliage and I can see it really well. And um, we're going to start at the top, at the highest point, and I'm going to tie the ribbon here to the top. And now we're going to make a guide around the boxwood towards the bottom. Um, aesthetically, you're thinking about how wide the tiers of the spiral will be apart. Uh, you're maybe considering that it's more attractive if they're closer together at the top and slightly further apart at the bottom, but more or less, you make a spiral. So here we go. Um, start there, and I'm just going to lay it like this around the plant. And then the nice thing about this method, too, is that you can lay it on there and take a look at it, and you can move it if you don't like it. So. See. So I'll see what that looks like. It's not bad. I'm going to move this a little bit. I like it when they spiral down at an angle, and I think it's too flat here. This is a little nicer there. So I'm going to do that there. And here I think it's fine. Again, you have to consider it's going all the way around the plant. So watch the whole, each side. 
Okay, that's not bad. So again, this is going to be subtractive. That means that we're going to remove the part of the boxwood where the ribbon is and allow the part where the ribbon is not to remain. And that's going to make the wider part where the ribbon is is going to be a void and that will expose a spiral shape. Now you can work with it with the ribbon on the plant like this. I find that really difficult because as you begin cutting, you remove the space that's holding the ribbon in place. So I'm going to paint it. Um, this might sound crazy, but I promise it works. I have this spray paint around the house. We're going to remove the area where the paint is anyway. It won't harm the plant, I promise. So now I'm just going to lightly follow around where the ribbon is and give myself a guide. This will just take a second. I'm slowly just going to go around. I'm just lightly marking the foliage. And again, if I don't like this, it's no problem. I can change it at any point. Here we go. All right there, isn't it gorgeous? It's like Christmas. Okay, so we'll take this off. And I'm not sure if the camera picks this up really well, but I can very clearly now see um, the areas that I'm going to remove. It's a perfect line. It's perfect. So. Okay, so I talked earlier about the different tools to use for topiary, the large shears and kitchen scissors. I find this beginning part is really easily done with scissors because it's neat and, and it's tight work. So let's try these. And basically what we want to create here is a, a V-shaped groove that goes in towards the center of the plant. So in this case, I'm going to start in the middle and work back up and back down so that I have a guide that's in the center of the plant and in that way it won't get uneven as I work down. So I'm going to start in at an angle and cut towards the painted area and I'm going to go down and away, down, down, down and away and then just gently clear that out and just continue and I'll show you one plane and then we can go back and I'll show you the finished product later on. But here we are, I'm just removing that. And again, you see it happens really quickly as you move around the plant. You begin to form this groove here, which is going to be our spiral. Uh, so let's see, I'm gonna continue here. Um, some other things to keep in mind as I'm working, I'll just mention, are uh, that uh, boxwood is a very forgiving plant. It is evergreen, which is really nice. That's actually very important for topiary. Uh, if you're gonna do all this work to make a gorgeous sculpture, it's really nice to be able to enjoy it all year round. Um, but also, because it's evergreen, the leaves of boxwood are actually very susceptible to drying out or desiccation. And when we make all these cuts, we're forming a little open area on each leaf and that little open area can actually dry out and die back which can make it look actually really unsightly in the end um, and there's a couple of ways that we can prevent that from happening the first thing is to shear it early in the season um, obviously this is later in the season now and that's okay but if you shear earlier in the season then uh, the sun isn't out it's not as strong and then it won't dry out other thing that helps is if you shear on a cloudy day and after you've done all of your shearing, especially like this if it's in a pot, it's very helpful. You can move it into the shade for a week or two to form a cuticle over that area that um, you've just cut. Uh, if you can't move it, if it's in the ground and planted, your other option is to spray it with a wilt proof spray or an anti-desiccant spray. Use the summer um, concentration, don't use the winter concentration and that will help to cover that cut until it has time to heal over on its own. And then it won't die back and turn brown, which again, is very unsightly. All right, so here we go. I've just begun to start here and I'm gonna work all the way around the plant towards the bottom. And then I'm gonna work back up towards the top. And uh, when I get the first groove set up, I'll come back and I'll show you how it looks. Okay guys, so you can see here, I have gone all the way around my spiral here and I've cut out all of the areas pretty much that were painted. Um, there are some areas where I didn't 100% follow the guide, 
there are some areas where I thought, oh, it doesn't look so great, it needs wider or more narrow, and I worked on those. Um, but it's fine, I think it looks really great, and I'm going to continue working on it today, and then the next time you see it, it'll be finished. But here it is, it's a spiral topiary, again it's made from boxwood, and this is Brad from Surfing Hydrangea Nursery, 91 Somerset Road on Nantucket.